Welcome to the second video of this series where we look at all event types in WISE. So next up is the break event. Now we're getting into the real cool stuff with WISE. Obviously everybody knows how to play and pause and resume and a lot of people use just those and there's just so much more that WISE can do. So I hope you guys find these tutorials useful and find kind of more efficient ways of making better sounding games. <laughs> So the break basically works the same way as stop. Obviously, like if you have a sound and you just stop it, it can be very abrupt and you may not want that. So sometimes the tail of your sounds may get just cut off or you may even, um, you know, click. So you don't want that. So for example, I have this avalanche. Uh, in this game, like a lot of disasters can happen, like earthquakes and avalanches. And with the avalanche, we basically have like random containers where a bunch of Foley sounds we made just play randomly together. So we have all these things rolling down like a hill, right? In this random container with a really low trigger rate that's randomized. And then there's these user defined paths that I put. So nothing is really like right in your face. Maybe there's dialogue there or maybe other things. And then we have these uh, attenuation settings, low pass and high pass for distance. And I even have a user defined uh, send because these sounds, they're not tied to any specific object in the game. Obviously in the real avalanche, there's a lot of balls, but if you have the game kind of track all those sounds, it would just eat up all your voices. So instead you make a bed track and you give priority to the closer sound. So let's give it a listen. Uh, yeah, and as you can see, it's just things rolling down a hill. And as you see, when I stopped it, it was really abrupt. And then we have this layer. Which is kind of like our constant uh, rumble sound that we need. So if you play these two containers together, they'll sound like this. Yeah, so obviously stopping this sound would just not sound natural. We created this system because we wanted the avalanche to sound different every time, but we also want it to sound natural. Otherwise, we would just record the output of the event and it would sound the same every time. And you may want to use the break event for your dialogue, like if you're stopping the dialogue for any reason. Like, you know, in GTA, if two people are in the car talking and then they like crash into another car, they would stop talking. But it just always ends it so abruptly. And that's just really weird to me. Like you can just use a break event to let that one phrase play to the end and then stop it. Or maybe that will sound weird. So anyway, in order for you to hear the effect of the break, you need to actually play the event. Uh, so let's open the Soundcaster by going Shift S and let's play the Avalanche and then stop it using the event we created. When I stop the event, it doesn't die off immediately, but it just stops generating more sounds and it lets whatever is playing play out. And it sounds way more natural. So next up is the Seek event. Again, we're really in the cool territory here. The Seek event is one of my favorite uh, event types for creating variation. So it basically changes the playback position of the sound file. So when you play sounds in your audio tab, it always plays from the beginning or wherever you put the entry cue for your sound. But with Seek, you can change where that plays from. So a really obvious application of that is in ambiences. So in our game, you know, um, it's kind of arcadey, so you may fail a mission over and over and have to like restart from the checkpoint. So if the ambiences start the same way every time, it just gets really boring. So instead, what you can do is when you play your ambiences, you use the Seek function so that the playback position of your ambience file is not always the beginning because your ambiences are probably really long, like minute, minute and a half long uh, files. So you can start from like the middle and it will just sound totally different and really way more dynamic. So I have my seek percentage at 90 and it's randomizing by minus 95. That means that the file can play either from the beginning or anywhere up to 95% the way to the end of the file. You don't want to play from the end of the file because that may sound weird. You always have to put your seek event after your play event. And then if you're playing a curve because you need to put a fade on your ambiences, you put that on the play event. Another really cool application of the seek event is to create infinite variation for files by pairing it with a envelope. 
So you should check out I Dream of Why series episode two for that. It's really cool. Again, I can't talk about that enough. So anyway, let's play our ambiences and see uh, what we can do. So select the right level here. Yeah, so that's basically it. So if I play it again, and if I play it again. So as you can see, Yusuke made this really cool, like kind of chimey thing that pitches up and down and is very dynamic. But again, your mind will kind of latch on to that if you keep playing it from the beginning. But by playing it from a random place, it sounds infinitely more varied. Um, and then, yeah, so you put a fake time on your ambiences so you don't need to worry about uh, clicking. And that's basically it.